Look at her. Hello. <laughs> hey, Victoria. Welcome to another exciting episode of... Feel It Real Fun for, with TTMV on the 4th of August, 2023. I'll tell you that. We finally got our shit together. Before. I know. <laughs> I it's amazing. Hello, you guys. All right. And it's your manifesting questions. Sorry, I said hello, you guys, and didn't even bother looking at you. It's <laughs> yeah, your yeah, manifesting yeah. questions. That's a lot. Hey, it's so great to see, see so you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I just realized I did that. Yeah, I did that with Wayne this morning. Oh, did you? Oh. No, I didn't do it with Wayne this morning. I saw Wayne. And well, I, he'd be and used I, to it with a I, blind guy. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wayne takes care of a blind guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Welcome yes. to another exciting episode, Joe Walden of, yeah, we already did that. We've done all that. All so right. go to easymanifestingmethods.com. Go there, do that, sign up for the seven free videos, Colby. And when you get the confirmation email link, click it all over and all <laughs> kind of cool shit will happen, Mark. Mark, a dockery. <laughs> all right. A dark mockery. A dark mockery. <laughs> Hoo-ha. You know, it's yeah. really wild. You put up a post the other day. And uh, I was just at, like, it was like three in the morning, you know, and I'm like, I haven't heard from Mark for a while. I just imagine this, woo ha And I wake up and there you are. So, boom, just nice. let you know. Whatever day you posted, wherever you posted at, I don't remember. Join your 90 day adventure at manifestingmasterycourse.com. That's like right, Don Terrio did. <laughs> we both said that. That's, That's spooky. Amazing. We complete each other's sentence. <laughs> oh, I know. We're like a, we're like a real We've life comic book. We've been too long, babe. No, not too long. But a long time. We've been together a long time, like <laughs> ages. Feels like forever. It does. <laughs> See, that's why words don't matter. Feels like I've known you forever. <laughs> right? It's the sideway glances that give it yeah, away. Yeah. It's like when you're around like, you know, the mother-in-law. It's like, yeah, I feel like I've known you forever. Yeah, huh? <laughs> and you've been rambling on forever in a day. <laughs> anyway, unlike your daughter, who I've known forever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Um, and for refunds, visit our YouTube channel, fillitrealfun.com. That's right. So let's get into the good questions and gales and gen or Galaxy. and, uh, galaxies too. Yes, and galaxies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this okay. guy is in that mood. <laughs> he is. Unbelievable. Okay. All right. So we've got a very long question. Our first question yeah, is you, from... You, you don't have to type all that out whenever you do I never this. type it. Uh, you, so you I, say this every, look I say this every week. When, when I edit shows, yeah, you yeah. don't bother looking. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to type all that out. So the first question <laughs> is from Debbie. Revise how I make money. Who? Uh, Debbie. And Debbie uh, says... Uh, Debbie. I bought Revision to the Max. That's revisiontothemax.com. That's right. And I've been listening. Uh, you, could, and you could put that in the bottom when you do it. I will be doing that. <laughs> I don't micromanage her at oh, all. <laughs> all right. I bought Revision to the Max and I've been listening to all your sharings on it. I'm currently a teacher and work day to night. I would ideally like to stop and just teach part time a bit and trade Forex and then just enjoy my days being online, doing online biz. I don't know if I should just revise the new story I want or revise any unwanted scenes I had at school. Hmm, school. Or do both. Also, I did try Forex trading but got too nervous and didn't do well. Yay, that's me. <laughs> I'm planning to revision at that, that it has been some time that already and I'm really good at it and hearing or telling my friends that I find I'm gifted at it. Is this right? Looking forward to hearing gold from you always. Thank you from Malaysia, Debbie. Malaysia, Debbie. You're now, close to us. True. We're in Melbourne. You're in Malaysia. <laughs> no. It's like we're... Okay. All right. See, I'm an American. I know all about geography. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes. all right, what was I talking about? Yeah, how to re Debbie. revise to make money. So, Debbie, here's what I'd do, right? So, pro one of the problems that I notice people have is they go all in on a tool and they try to use the tool, like use a hammer for a screwdriver, right? So, I'm assuming you want to be a Forex trader that you're not just doing it for the money, right? If you want to be a Forex trader, I'd imagine being, yeah, these, these two words that I really love, accomplished and satisfied, I build them into I build them into revisioning. I, re, I build them into congratulatory conversations. I mean, why would somebody ask me for uh, relationship advice? Because I, I feel accomplished and satisfied. We've broken records together. 
Yes. Right? We've both been in prior relationships, right? <laughs> Shits, <laughs> yeah. yes. And, and in prior relationships, they were you know, things went sour. But we've been together mm -hmm. for a record number of years, each of both of us together. Yeah. So, 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 so I imagine people asking relationship <laughs> questions, right? So that accomplished and satisfied kind of thing. And so if you really want to trade Forex, I'd explore what it feels like to be accomplished and satisfied. If you don't, if it's just one of those things where it would be better than... Uh, it's like when some people go going to work, or then going to work, right? It yeah. would be something better than I'm not a fan of that because that's probably not unearthing mm. a real desire. Yeah. So, uh, as far as what to revise now, you know, I, I, personally, you you mentioned the whole thing. I'm currently a teacher and I work day to night. I'd revise into working less hours and having more money. How could you do that? Mm. Right. Really simple. I mean, you could imagine having your evenings off, right? Mm. And you could imagine that uh, a five dollar cup of coffee is no big deal. Mm. Because I can remember when a five buck a coffee, five dollar <laughs> cup of coffee I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Five bucks for a coffee? All right, I can steal one of those, right?" <laughs> yeah, right. Unbelievable! You just take your old cup and you go and get your free refill, right? Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, like that kind of thing. Your 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 inner conversations determine a lot. So I'd play with all the tools, inner conversations. I'd, you know, sen you know, sense of humor isn't really officially a tool, but for me it is. You know, this, <laughs> this whole thing of like accomplished and satisfied, how can you build that in? Because if you were making, yeah, the same amount of money and working a lot less, yeah, mm. accomplished, satisfied. And that's it, like with Malaysia being so close to, like, that was one thing that I found, yeah, like trading Elden. Forex, like she mentions working day to night. And if you're really working forex, it cuts into our night. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's totally. Like, yeah, yeah. And when, when the like opens weird are times during closes. the day, and it's just like, so it would be the same scenario, really. Yeah. A forex trader. Yeah. So could be. Could be. Could be. Mm. Yeah, she could find another way to trade. I don't know. Yeah, like you know, yeah. personally, trading opens and closes a lot of fun. You know, that's where the movement tends to be. You know, middle of the day. Eh. Yeah. So, yeah. Nap time. <laughs> <laughs> Nap time. Nap time. Okay. All right. All right. Good Debbie, one. stay tuned. We're going to continue to answer this question and more as we continue with Fran and Benjamin who have joined the show. Hello, Fran and Benjamin. All right. Okay. Excellent. The next question is from Jordan in Manifesting Mastery. That's right. Dealing with doubt. That's right. Jordan, by the way, put off doing Manifesting Mastery for, I don't know, maybe a year, nine months. It was a while, enough, long enough to have a baby. Congratulations. <laughs> and, but Jordan didn't have a baby that I know of, right? Oh. <laughs> but well, Jordan but did join us enough. in ManifestingMasteryCourse.com <laughs> and has a great question. Okay. And he appreciates my sense of humor sometimes. <laughs> okay. And Jordan asks... Absolutely love the energy behind all of these. That's the Manifesting Mastery Course dot com <clears throat> lessons. In truth, I'm still going back to session one quite a bit. Yeah, that aren't is, we all? Yeah. Right? That's the one, Jordan. Ooh. But I loved your podcast on Feel It Real and Breaking That Down. One of the things I was wondering what your th thoughts were on about doubt. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel I always feel a sense of almost evolutionary urgency to rid myself of doubt, as if I did not immediately do so, it would ruin something. Let's pause for a moment. Mm. So this evolutionary urgency thing, you know, when I was a kid, like about your age or younger, big deal is getting rid of your appendix and your <laughs> tonsils and your adenoids because they didn't do a fucking thing, right? <laughs> So 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 the doctors were always looking for excuses to get rid of them, especially when you're on Rip welfare, right? Oh, it's well. like the government will pay for this. So like, you got a tummy ache? Yeah, it could be your appendix. Let's rip it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> let's play a game called no. Say, hey, how about those tonsils? Right? Uh, I've become attached to them. <laughs> right? So 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 this, so this is where I noticed that the play tends to go, right? Mm. So uh, on day seven, what did God say, Luke? I am your father. Right? It was very, very good. It was very, very good. At the end of day one, it was good. Yeah. At the day, end of day two, Don, it was good. Yeah. At the end of day three, it was good. Right? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, we're going to skip to the end because Victoria's going to lose her freaking mind. Right? Yes. At the end of day, day seven, God said it was very good. Right? It was good, I good. It was very, very good. Very, very Just good. Just very good. It was good, good. Was it? it was very, very good. We're going to have to look it up. Might yeah. be it might be different in the lamps edition. We'll have to look. Mm. All right. So, 
I'll assume that the appendix, the tonsils, the adenoids, and doubt are all good. But let us continue. Okay. Do you have any thoughts or ways to change perceptions on, or techniques, on how to either seat up from a different parallax angle or ways to help quickly remove it? I'm very aware of most three-dimensional neuroscientific tools on how to do things like that. Everything from meditation to four, seven, eight breathing techniques and so on. But I was super interested in your take on how to seed out. Thanks for being awesome. <laughs> really loving this course. Manifestingmasterycourse.com I'm... <laughs> I'm doing asymmetrically at the moment. There's a lot of parallax I, asymmetrically. Uh, 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 anyway, sorry, I'll keep going. Jordan's I'm doing intelligent. <laughs> asymmetrically at the moment. But I do want to go back in, back to this over the long haul and share my own responses to this. But just to say, in the most non-surface level way, thank you and Victoria. All right, so back oh. during the foundational points of this project, right? So th this project has a few inceptions. One was 2006, the other one was 2011-ish, right? And in both those periods of time, I went online and asked some people that I know, love, and respect, and they both said, and they both said NLP, hmm. and uh, there was known as Neuro Linguistic Programming, and Law of Attraction are both dead markets. Yeah. Radio, right? <laughs> It may be dead for you, right? <laughs> See, now I doubted them. I'm the guy that doubts doctors when doctors tell me things. That, by the way, I love doctors. They're very useful. But when they tell me, so they, they said like PTSD back in the old days, you're, you're going to be able to manage it but not cure it. So you're going to have to put up with flashbacks and hating people and wanting to burn houses down and shit like that. And it's like, ah. <laughs> right? You're not really a fan of that, right? Uh, so I doubt uh, what doesn't fit in with what I've chosen. You know, there's a lot of people right now that are saying, oh, the economy is bad, and since the economy is bad, you're not going to make enough money, and people aren't going to buy shit, and everyone's going to fucking starve, and everyone's going to live under a bridge. The bridge is going to get really fucking crowded. <laughs> right? Now you think about this. you got an $18 billion bridge. you got a $400,000 house. People are going to lose I'll their... I'll just move into the $400,000 house. <laughs> yeah, somebody will move into the $400,000 houses because the bridges are overcrowded, there. right? Yeah. And I just, I mean, they go on... And I've shared the whole thing back when I was a little 12-year-old puppy walking to the corner bookstore, and they had the 72, 74, 76, 78, 1980 editions of the up-and-coming financial collapse. And the book kept getting bigger and updated. Mm -hmm. I bought all the editions of it, right, because I'm that guy, right? I collect them all. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I just doubted all that shit. And I know people to this day. I graduated in 1984. They were poor. I was poor. They're still poor. I'm not. Right? I've actually traveled the world. Yes, a number of times. <laughs> right. So yeah. let us con oh, yeah, let us continue, then I'll come back and I'll answer uh, other, bits. Uh, other bits. Okay, all right. So that's that for Jordan. Yeah, but Jordan, I'll be back. Mastery. Thank you, Jordan. Yasmin Maxwell. Hello, yes. That's right. <laughs> the next question is from Chris in Manifesting Mastery. Oh, look at that. How to deal with doubt. That's amazing. Yeah. Who else dealing with doubt and how to deal with doubt? Yes. All right. And Chris asks, how to deal with doubt? Yeah, I got a kick out of this one. All right. So as I put Jordan's in, uh, uh, Chris's shows Chris's. up. Right? Yeah. So here's the thing. If we try to remove it. I we, haven't we, said his so, question yet. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Although, is that the answer and it's only how to deal with doubt? Yeah, exactly. I just oh, okay, sure sorry. I talked about Thomas. Okay, got you. Sorry. Sorry then. Don't yeah. be sorry. Just be so obedient. So Chris just asks how to deal yeah, with doubt. Yeah, to yes. love, obey, and honor. <laughs> <laughs> I said to her this morning, she was looking at the receipt, and I said, give me that. <laughs> you can imagine how that went Bye. down with her. <laughs> She's like, What? Like, who are you to talk to me like that? Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, why? <laughs> and she and remembers. Much shorter oh, than out of the bin yeah, when you're yeah, not looking. Yeah, next week's my birthday. <laughs> oh, I got it now. So, yeah. How to deal with doubt? So, this whole thing of, of of the disciple of Thomas. That's pretty much what I've already dove into. But I'm going to go back into Jordan's question while I do Chris's answer, right? Just for fun, because I like to mm. do this. People develop techniques that are unnecessary. 
And that's because they come from concepts that aren't necessary. And I really do. I look at this whole thing with Thomas. Thomas is one of the 12 disciples. We did a year-long training on the 12 mm. disciples last year. It was pretty cool. Nice. Probably going to do a course or another 12-month training on it. I haven't made up Definitely my mind yet. Definitely need to do more on that because it was brilliant. But it, but it was just, it, it was so good because Thomas is dependent upon Simon Peter. Simon Peter you know, is, the, is the disciple of hearing, the gatekeeper. doesn't let anything in. That's not honorable and dignified. Mm. And now Thomas is the one, if something gets through, I doubt that. Right? I can't tell you how many times I've told experts, right? Mm. Right? Because, you know, I love experts. I love paying them money to tell me things that I need to know. But when they tell me something I don't need to know, right? It's like, yeah, righty oh. <laughs> so are you saying, sorry, is Thomas the first one after Simon Peter? No, 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 no. Tom, oh, Thomas no. is way down, way down the, the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. Okay, got you. So, but but the two work hand in hand. Yeah, right. So. So if Simon Peter let it in. Yeah, if Simon Peter was asleep on you. the job. Asleep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I was yeah. a doorman. My first job, besides teaching martial arts, well, my first job is weeding. Right? My mm. second job was teaching martial arts. My third job, my first official job, was uh, I was a bouncer at the Tropics in... Uh, <laughs> the yeah, it was, what was the name of that little... In little, Pennsylvania. Little, 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 yeah, it was, <laughs> oh, it was great. Yeah, I tell you what. Yeah, I don't think you get Tropics. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Hank the DJ. Oh, Hank was awesome. See, I still got memories. A little what's-her-name. She was like a little weird goth girl. She was absolutely great fun. She used to... She, she was good fun. Not in a naughty way. Yeah, she was just, yeah, she didn't take no shit like someone else I know. Right. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Victoria. Yeah, okay, cool. Excellent. Right. So that was from Chris in Manifesting Mastery. Are you sure? No, it wasn't. It was from, sorry. What? Yeah. Chris in Manifesting <laughs> Mastery. <laughs> doubt, doubt, baby. Doubt, <laughs> baby. Right. How much fun can you have with doubt? All right. By the way, I, I, I have people all the time, they seriously, they tell me things, oh, you're not concerned about your business? No. <laughs> right. Right, yo. I'm plugged into this thing called the internet. I mean, like, like the internet determines all kind of things. The internet. Yeah, the internet. <laughs> yeah, the internet just goes, really? Anyway. Okay. Beth, you're not like the whole rest. All mm. right. So, oh, dear. I, the next I screwed question. one of them up, didn't I? Is from Dream Driven Day Ontario. Dream Driven Day Ontario. He lives in Ontario. If he ever moves, we're going to just going to be screwed. <laughs> I know. Everything. You got to move to a place I O. <laughs> yeah, like Pittsburgh. Right. Rio. Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, dealing with death, uh, and Ontario asks how to deal with grief, like loss of a friend, loved one, pet. Using Neville's technique. Cool. So I titled it "How to Deal with Death" because you didn't put that in, right? So, <laughs> so I decided to just just j me. just die, just peel down a couple layers of the Had onion, mm. right? So uh, here's the thing: we don't die. Mm. And like, so I had this dog named George. I got George at a mm. flea market, uh, and he was full of fleas and worms. Right? He was so mm. bad. So I got him from my brother-in-law. So this is uh, wife number one. So we got, so we got your him. Your brother-in-law. Yeah, he was just a little kid then, right? So, we, so I got George for, for Cease, right? So I got George to give him to Cease. The mother said no, so we ended up keeping George. Took George to the vet. That was on a Sunday. Took George to the vet on Monday, and he just pumped him full of something. Just gave him a shot and said, mm -hmm. "Take the puppy home." Uh, at this point in time, there's four people on the planet that have my phone number. Some habits don't change. Have you, have you noticed this? <laughs> yes. See, I just noticed that. So there's four people. That have my phone number because it was on my dead cousin, my elderly dead cousin's name, which is great. So it was under the name Merck, right? So anyway, so the phone rings and I pick it up and I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this voice says, how's that puppy? I said, that puppy is good. He goes, that's good. I wasn't sure if he was going to make it. He'll be fine. <laughs> and he hangs up and I realize, oh, that's the vet, right? Oh, so, wow. so I have I got George. George is fun. Time goes on. George dies, right? I mean, you fed him whole turkeys and oh, I fed George. I didn't I didn't know any better. I I fed him t <laughs> cooked t cooked turkey carcasses, pure chocolate cake. I mean, should have should have killed a dog. Oh, poor George. And, but George was bulletproof, man. And so here's why I'm talking about my old dog George, right? So George, I end up having to give him away. George dies. Uh, then suddenly my 
uh, I'm in a household and there's five kittens that show up. And one of them has really weird fur for a cat, right? And it's an all black cat with a little white dot. George was an all black dog with a little white dot. And uh, sure enough, this little cat, you know, like over time I get, oh, you're George, right? You're back for another, for another round of me. This will be fun. Mm. Right. So this whole thing of mm. like, we don't die. It's, you, you move from here to there in a twinkle of an eye, next rodeo, so on and so forth. So, uh, do I miss my grandma? Absolutely. It was, I said, when she died, you betcha. But I also got, you know what? Grandma's not in pain anymore. She can have a lot more fun. Yeah. Next, you know, next rodeo. So for me, it's that attitude of noticing, and this comes from playing with devil's techniques, your awareness of being is God. So the earth suit dies, whether you're a critter, whether you're you know, a companion, whatever it is, the earth suit dies, you mm. continue and imagine lovingly. I mean, like there are times where like I, I had this cat named Calico and uh, pr probably two weeks ago, just Calico pops in my head while I'm in the hot tub. So I just imagine happy for Calico. Calico has been dead for years, mm. All right? But it's like, all right. Still imagine lovingly. Mm. So, Don Terrio, thank you. Coolio, mm. look at him. He said thank you. He's uh, polite. Good one, Don. Yes. Don Terrio. <laughs> cool. And we'll continue to answer your question and others as we continue to answer other people's questions. Thank you, Don Terrio. Live on today's show. <laughs> the next cat question is from mm. Kathy on Facebook Revising a Violent Childhood. And Kathy asks, how to do revision on a violent childhood. Thank you so much for your instruction. Coolio, my childhood sucked, but it wasn't violent, except for girls that were like three years younger than me used to beat me up. So, oh. <laughs> like, I mean, like, seriously, I could explain a few patterns. <laughs> anyway, <Yes. laughs> so, so the way life goes on. So this whole thing of... Uh, so, this, so this whole thing of... If you really got some shit to revise, mm. okay, yeah, I, I, when I was 23 years old, I got beat to death, prison riot. Uh, when you when you die, you do poop and pee, right? Mm. Yeah, it just happens, right? Some people say, way too many details, and then they want to know, oh, but did you see the tunnel? Did you go to the room? Yeah, 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 whatever. But anyway, you die, you come back, you, you've evacuated, right? You know, you know, everything sort of stinks. It's just not that much fun anymore, <laughs> radio. But you're happy to be back in a way. So all this bullshit, but I was traumatized by that, had PTSD, all that good shit. And one of the things that I realized worked effectively well was revise yesterday. I have no interest in changing what happened. I can tell you the stories, but at the same time, it feels as though it happened to someone else because mm. I just kept revising the reactions I had to it yesterday. Mm. And excuse me, uh, it makes all the difference. So if you got something like that, or you know someone like that, it does feel like that, doesn't it? Actually, because when when I'm sure for all of us, when we reflect back on our lives, how what we were like when we were twenty and what we were doing feels like yeah, sexy and hot. I know. You, you should have like, seen me. It's I had like a, lifetimes I, 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 ago. It I feels like eight pack of abs or whatever <clears> they are. Six really? Pack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, you had an eight pack. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was I was buff, man. You should have seen me. <laughs> Yeah, but it really feels like that. It's like so different to how our life is now. You know. Yeah, totally. All Absolutely. All these experiences, or and there's like big batches of life uh, that have happened in our lives. Do you know what I mean? Where they feel like they're separate lives. So, you betcha. Yeah. Different That's episodes, good. different shows. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. like it's like the the Crown. They change the actors. You know, mm. Every two season, they change the actors. They needed to, right? because of the span of the show. Mm. So, you know, I'd play there. Revise yesterday. If something bothered you yesterday or impacted you yesterday, revise yesterday. Yeah, right. And watch what happens. And that little revision pack, revision to the max.com, mm. that is an absolute steal. I should double the price on it and double it again. Mm. All right. So, do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Just go and do it. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The show. Oh, I've got way too many links to it at the seven dollar special. <laughs> but yeah. uh, cool. it could be the seven dollar plus seven dollar special. Seven plus seven plus seven plus uh, seven. That's right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Alessandra. Hello. Oh, Alessandra. <laughs> Alessandra. Cool. So that was Alessandra. From Kathy on Facebook. Alessandra. Oh. 
Oh. <laughs> Alessandra, 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 Alessandra. Put up a link to your things. Alessandra's my vocal coach. If I'm actually doing something that sounds good, blame her. Yes. <laughs> if I'm doing something that sounds bad, blame the blame microphone. <laughs> right? I don't take no blame. Right? Anyway. Okay. All right. The next question's from Dream Driven Day Riri. Is ADHD a real thing? And Riri hey, Bruce. asks. Hi, Emmett. Riri asks. Is AD... Look at the wind outside. Hey, Matt, right. Bruce. You're displaying ADHD, are you? Um, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm displaying <laughs> something. something. Right? Yeah, I've got you. That's right. Is ADHD a real thing, and can it be the cause of my behaviour and pattern? I've been recently diagnosed with it. I always felt like it was a little difficult for me to do my daily tasks. I feel low in energy, I procrastinate a lot, and my relationships after some time go rough. Or is it a secondary cause? So I went really deep down this rabbit hole about two years ago. Mm. And and here's, here's the thing that I find. So there's people that are, quote, unquote, not ADHD. There are people that are. Then there are people that are that are totally functional and, all, and sometimes super performers. Right? Uh, what, is it a real thing? I, by law, if I say it's not, you know, I, I get in trouble with the FTC or the FDA or the AMA or somebody. Right, so since they say it's real, radio, right, whatever. So here's what I'm going to suggest. In my world, everything is a state, and you can use any state as an excuse to be dysfunctional or super functional. So, uh, do I have PTSD? Who the fuck knows? Right? I've had psychologists and psychiatrists both, you know, say, you know, you must have been misdiagnosed. Right? Radio, whatever. But here, here's the thing. Whatever you got. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to, uh, Jordan's question. Day seven, very good. Mm. Right. So, you know, I, I've got a whole model around this. I could take about two hours and talk about this. This is shit that I've dove really, really deep into because at the end of the day, uh, there are some states that are really wired to do very specific things and they're very effective at it. And, uh, my suggestion is you're probably trying to fit in uh, where you really could... Where you fit out. Uh, where, where, where you really could do something yeah. unique and uh, useful. Different, yeah. Native American yeah. cultures, by the way, uh, they would look at somebody with ADHD as, as you know, probably as a medicine man or a shaman. Mm. Just mm. because they process things differently. Mm. Here we go. Hey, let's fucking medicate them. Let's diagnose them. Let's give them some money. Mm. You know, let's, yeah, whatever. Not a fan of any of that bullshit. Just to be blunt. So, and if, if I look at the self-scoring ADHD test on the internet and uh, mm -hmm. on like the probably two dozen books I've read, I score well into the spectrum, right? So the thing is, why is it that I'm productive and happy, right? So here's my thing. And I love that you end with this, uh, secondary <laughs> or, or is it secondary cause? Yeah. Anything can be secondary cause. Yeah. The thing is your desires are divine in origin. Each of them have their own plan and power. And uh, I'd strongly suggest uh, keep diving back into what we do here. Crash commercial for Dream Driven Day. I know you've done it once. I invite you to do it again. Mm. So let us continue. Do you want to add on to that? You oh. live with me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she's a little OCD. OCD. Yeah. yeah. What's that mean? Uh, yeah, you oh. touch things uh, between touching things before you touch things. <laughs> oh, I like cleaning the cooker as I'm cooking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, so she's a little OCD, right? Now the thing is, she yeah, we could all imagine that that's a problem and it's going to get worse, or she could utilize it as a tool. Yeah. Right. Yep. So just tossing some things. Realizing about me, but interesting. Okay. Oh, oh you're yeah, right. <laughs> Remember the guy in the uh, what was it? One of the Fargos. <laughs> anyway. The yeah. cop. He was a detective. Hmm. Anyway, okay. that's Excellent. right. Excellent. Yeah, she washes her hair while drying her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Riri, for your Thank question. Thank you, Riri. This is great. By the way, keep asking about stuff like this, right? Entertain some dialogue, because what tends to happen is people settle for a diagnosis, then they go fucking nuts. A little bit of dialogue can help you sort through things and move along. That's also why I love DreamDrivenDay.com. 
crass commercial number two. Two crass commercials and one re re. <laughs> in one re re. <laughs> That's right. Cool. Coral, Vic and I are always right. I tell you, you should have seen her when I said, like, don't look at that. Give me, no, I said, give me that. I yeah. honest to God, her, her first her eyes turn, and then her head turns. It's one of those Arnold Schwarzenegger move, moments. Have you ever seen a Schwarzenegger movie? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so she probably adopted that really unconsciously. But her, but her eyes go. <laughs> yeah. And then her head goes. <laughs> and it's like, I just don't, don't, don't look at me, that. Don't look at that. You're going to see something you don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch the show. Don't join us in Dream Driven Day. You're going to see something you don't want to see. Cool. All Excellent. right. The next question is from Dream Driven Day Coral. Oh, look, she's here. The four Hot mighty diggity, ones. dog diggity. Rip. The four mighty ones. The author. <laughs> cool. So this year's Dream Driven Day. The, the so it, we've got at least three frameworks in there. The most obvious one that we predicated everything on, or the four mighty ones that Dumble Goddard talked about. Now, what's really cool with four mighty ones? It's literally one of the real basic formulas for getting shit happening, right? The second step or the second component, this, or the, the second player, is the author. The author has a job to construct the final scene, to imagine a scene that implies the wish fulfilled, short, sweet, to the point. And where I notice people really get screwed up is they don't have the producer do the producer's job, which we won't go into here, yeah. but or they, they make this magnificent scene or 400 scenes, or they do anything other than, what's the short, sweet thing that would imply the wish is fulfilled? There's going to be something short and sweet. Victoria's yum. One sip of coffee. We get done with the show, and I think, "Fuck Christ, this is over." Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that's not what I imagine. No. <laughs> anyway, right? So, the, so the whole thing is, how do you do the author better? The author just writes that little tiny final scene bit that implies that's it. Yeah. And for me, yeah, and here's here's a big mistake, right? Everybody talks about let's make mind movies. Mind movies are great. We're gonna make long mind movies, right? Yeah. Versus mind, per, uh, mind, or, or mind. Yes, both. Mind. Yeah, mind movies, right? <laughs> Which one? Her hearing is actually pretty damn good, because <laughs> I'm I'm like when they do the uh, trick ambitious card. They say in magic, you never do the same trick twice in front of somebody. Well, with the ambitious card, you do the same seeming trick like five times. But the thing is, you do it five different ways. So as soon as they think they've caught on to it, right, it's, you're, like, you're, oh, you're, you're, wrong it's like, oh, no, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. okay. So ambitious card is all about helping your audience realize they're wrong. <laughs> but anyway, okay. <laughs> look it up, ambitious card. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, All the greats have done their own variation of it. There's kind of that Tommy Wonders ambitious card really well. But anyway, I seem to digress. How do I author better? That final <laughs> little bit. It's more like a gif than a movie. Right? I love GIFs. Hated them when they first came out. I thought this is the most worthless piece of shit on the internet. Right? Love GIFs now. So, yeah. Boom. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Want the author to do its job? One tiny little thing, just like that. Mm. Great question, by the way, because so many people, it's like they do watch all these. Hi, I'm Betsy, Law of Attraction Coach. We're going to make a 15-minute mind movie today to imply that you got a text. Well, you get a text. A text takes what? Burp, got a text. And you're going to make a 15-minute movie about that? That's OCD. Anyway. It's okay. actually how people worry and go nuts, right? They, they get the formula exactly backwards, right? One little incident, and they yak about it for four fucking years. How was your mother? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> now, now, the thing is, she'll go, I watched your show. I didn't yeah, understand I the thing that he said. <laughs> That's I right. Name once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't understand what he said about that. That's right. Anyway, that was good Okay, fun. excellent. All right, we got, wow, three, four more. Yeah, good so more. that was for yeah. Coral. Thank uh, you very much for your question. question. Cramp. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next question is from Dream Driven D, D Galaxy. Galaxy. Aggressive situations and feel it real. And Galaxy asks, I'd like to know a bit more about how you manage to imagine your future during the riots in the middle of unimaginable unimaginable pain now, considering that i've got that i'm in pain right now that i got a really nice cramp lovely mm. let's see how this plays out 
Sometimes I find myself in the middle of aggressive situations and where I can't think properly and I revise right then and there. Cool. <clears throat> so thinking obviously it has to do with, uh, it, it's an action, right? So, 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 so that's code, right? For you people in Remarkable, thinking, right? Act. So here's what I want you to do. Stop and be still. You are the stillness that hears the sound of my voice. You're the silence that notices all motion or something like that, right? So when shit hits the fan, whatever it is, just just notice the stillness that you are is noticing it. And that and immediately yeah, allows the space for what comes next. But if you try to go into, I want to revise something, yeah, yeah while you're on tilt, not going to happen. So that whole thing of like, whenever like I go to the pool and it's like, ah, grumble, 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 ah, fuck, I'm just sick of hearing the grumbling. So I'll imagine something really nice coming out of uh, said person's mouth, right? And so meanwhile, while I'm doing it, the first thing I'm actually doing is just being still. I'm just being still. And then at some point, uh, I'm hearing what I want to hear. And at some point, I'm hearing what I want to hear. So, uh... So they're like losing quibbles. It's like... What might have bugged you just moving into just being yeah. do you know what i mean yep mm. absolutely <laughs> mm. and and the big cool thing is remember it's not that i have to still my mind that makes it an activity mm. yeah this is not an activity you are the stillness so this whole thing uh state stacking.com there are some things that fall into the area to the realm of activity this is your true identity is stillness statestacking.com no actually we don't own that fuck me dead dot com don't, don't own that don't either go there. so states <laughs> state stacking I, I should see <clears throat> nobody buy that by the end of the show right because that would be a good one to buy anyway <laughs> uh, neville goddard store.com right okay all right dr brian is okay. splitting like a banana all right see you banana man brian okay excellent so that was for Galaxy. But Banana Man Brian is putting up a strawberry bit. Oh, good on you, Brian. Banana Man Brian. He's splitting um, like a banana. Thank you, Galaxy, for your question. All right. The next question is from Dream Driven Day. Christina is feel it real live as uh, if... Oh, no. I no. fucked that all up. Anyway. What did you fuck up? Oh, the title. It's all wrong. See, I can admit that when I'm wrong. You must oh, have been. All right. You must that have been bugging good. me. You must have been is bugging me. Is feel it real live? Is feel it real live as if? I should have like the same as live as well, if. Well, as if. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the difference between feeling it real, and what many out there say to live as if? I'm going to live as if I answered Gail's question. Right. right now, if I did that, <clears throat> right. So when her question pops up, if I was living as if I answered Gail's question, so I'm, <laughs> so so I already answered Gail's question, so I can't do it. So I actually have to do it in the real world. So, what's the difference between living, feeling it real? Um, okay. So feeling it real would have me imagining I'm a happy, loving teacher, and I'd probably answer your question. Living as if I answered your question. Who's next? Yeah, as it because then it's like you haven't even address that yeah <laughs> yeah right. right so feeling it real that i double man come works half the time has me do decisions like maybe i'll sell my coin collection and buy shit invest in education whatever it takes to have my double my income work half my time right something like that happens uh living as if i've doubled my income you know hey i'm out of credit card <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with credit cards and using credit cards. The thing is, if 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 you're feeling it real for having doubled your income, and it's like, you know, like yeah, you know, and a course comes up or something you want to do, DreamDrivenDay.com, whatever, uh, cool, you do it. Right. On the other hand, living as if I I know people would say I'm living as if I'm doing coaching calls with you. So let me know how that goes. Right. <laughs> On the other hand, if you feel it real as if we are doing coaching calls or whatever, you, you get it. There, there's the difference right there. And that really mm. bit at the beginning, if I lived as if I answered your question, <clears throat> I wouldn't give a shit if you got anything or not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm living as if, right? <laughs> On the other hand, happy, loving teacher, the state goes, you got it. Cool. Love it. <laughs> cool <one>. Right. <laughs> Feeling it real to me, being a naturally flirtatious person, which I am not, uh, but I am now. Uh, invites this kind of dance 
living as if, yeah, I am too sexy for my house. <laughs> too sexy for my I love that guy. What is it? Fred said Fred? Something like that? I can't remember. Yeah, yes said yeah. Fred. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, all right. So okay. we've got one more question. Yeah, this is excellent. It's from Lisa and the Rock. Triple excellent. D. So the last question today is from Dream Driven Day, Lisa. Inspired impression. Ooh, uh, and Lisa asks, "Hi." That wind's really going on out it there. It really is. Hey, there's Mike. Actually. Hi, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm back on the ADD question. <laughs> By the way, you'll notice, quote unquote, what most people would consider ADD. I draw stuff from all over the place in a way that's very functional. Some people just get drawn all over the place. Yeah, right. And they consider it a curse. You have to learn how to focus. Right, yo. Thank God I don't know how to focus all on. Right. I focus from. Anyway. Okay. So the last question is from Dream Driven Day, Lisa. Inspired impression. Yes. And Lisa asks, hello, Tony and Victoria. Neville shares, shares in the state of vision, at this is lecture, this story. And Neville says, I know a very fine artist who was starving and didn't have a dime with which to buy food. One night she was so tired, she stretched out on her couch and said, Lord, you said if I but believed, all things would be possible. Well, I believe that I am well fed. I didn't actually hear the words audibly, but received an impression which was, if you really believed as you claim, wouldn't you prepare the table for the meal? With that, she began to set the table in her imagination. I'm excited to hear what you have to share about this sort of inspired impression. Thank you both, Lisa. Cool. Want to go first? Um, yes, because I know there's been a number of times in my life where... Um, you have to look this way. No, I like to look outside while I'm yeah. thinking, yes. and then I will turn back when I'm ready. All right. <laughs> no. Um, yes. So when I was in, um, the, like, for example, one of them was starting off my business in the UK, and it was like I'd been licking my wounds for a year and spent all my money and really didn't have any anything left. But it was like all of it came to me how I just wanted to move into doing more of the accounting accountancy for myself mm -hmm. and um i just remember driving down the hill one day and it just suddenly hit me with the the name of the business and um it i just knew i just knew that's it and it it wasn't a belief in it was like um I didn't force it and make myself believe and go out and do it. It was like it really felt inspired. And with that, it was just an, a conviction. It's, it's not, do you know what I mean? Because believe feels a bit like, oh, well, I believe in that. But I just had so much inner conviction. I just knew it was happening. And that's when I just moved on, like setting the table. Yeah, of course. So, and it's happened so many times like that in my life where certain things were just like, oh, that's it. You know, I, I just know. I know it's happening. And just moving on and doing the steps that I need to do. So, But you go with your bit. Cool. And I'll stare back out the window. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure they heard you, that's all. Yeah, okay. So, so wasn't trying to control you. Thought, <laughs> okay, give, yes. give, give me that. <laughs> Right. Yes. Cool. So, yeah, this is really, really good because I notice a lot of people try to control the movements of their attention in a way yeah. that's just, just a war, right? It's like the ADHD, like trying to, oh, I've got to focus on this and do this daily task. It's just like, yeah, it becomes a war being like yeah. that. So Yeah, so if you're, quote, unquote, all over the place <laughs> and you have to focus on something mm. versus like, what if you were focusing from something and allowed yourself to gather data from all over the place? That's what mm. medicine men do right so this whole thing of like yeah if if you, if she honestly believed she would be what was the term that they used well so, fed well fed yeah and she said setting the table yeah you'd prepare so the table really for the believed, meal wouldn't you prepare the table for the meal absolutely yeah. so so like here's like so, like i noticed there's some people that tell me oh i'm imagining working out and exercising and all this stuff cool do you have any exercise now let me back up i had a fella come here right from overseas and he says, I'm imagining coming over. I says, cool, do you have a passport? Oh, that's right. No. And I said, cool, get one. 
All right, eventually gets a passport. Cool. Hey, I'm planning on coming. Cool. So you're I'm imagining coming. Cool. Uh, had you got a visa? Visa. Yeah. Visa. <laughs> All right. I know. So, it, and, and it's the walking through these things because if you honestly get, uh, I'm going to Australia from a foreign land, you'll find yourself getting a passport, getting a visa, eventually getting tickets, so on and so forth, right? Mm. And that's on the physical side, but it's also on the imaginal side because here's what I notice when you nail an imaginal act, author, when you nail an, an, an imaginal act, uh, I become 100% immovable and 100% in motion. You will not knock me out of my state, mm. right? On the other hand, all that I do will come from my state. Yeah. So, so, so when I when, when it's time for me to do the podcast, like like the, like the, one of the things in the morning is I I never take incoming before the podcast, never, right? And so it's like radio. So I, I'm totally in the in the realm of teacher. I respond to things. I'll type to things. I, you know, I'll do whatever I got to do, get things moving. Then I'll go out to to do the podcast. But I am unmovable. Nothing get nothing. But I'm also only moving in that direction. So, mm -hmm. so this whole thing of like, it, it, like I'm not a fan of the word believe either, because it tends to just be a nominalization. Mm -hmm. But this whole thing of like, if I really am imagining what I'm, what I say I'm imagining, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, nothing's going to move me out of that, and I'm going to be moved from that. Mm -hmm. So it's like the wheels on the bus go round and round. The axle stays still. The tire rotates around it. So. Uh, that's what I got. And I think that's a good that's one. It's really good, Tony. I really love that. That's all of what you've just been saying. Is that's what you just demonstrated. Strawberry bit. And it's like I really get how that ties in as well with like that guy that um, I, I'm, it was like, I believe I'm, I'm coming to Australia. It was like that question before as well. It was the difference between feeling it real and living as is. Living, living as is. And it yeah. was like, well, you got a passport? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. yeah, yeah, get a passport. Yeah, yeah. so that's fabulous. Yeah. Totally. So yeah. I like, see, so so <clears throat> one of my strawberry bits is you tying it into that question. Yeah, because it's it's so real. It's it's this mm. whole thing of like uh, when I imagine worldwide impact, podcasting mm. didn't even exist. But I, I but I was a young guy living in southwestern Pennsylvania. You can look up the town I live lived in. It was eleven thousand people next to like forty thousand acres of game lands, which I ran around covered in mud in. <laughs> right, uh, you know, that was my territory, but I'm imagining worldwide impact. Meanwhile, I got me a little program that enabled me to make trifold flyers that I would stick in magazines at the magazine store. Right, that's how I built a little business. I was teaching out of my living room, the local park, in the woods. Mm. But I'm imagining worldwide impact, and along, and that has me do that back then. Now I look at that skill, and being able to write three articles or more on one sheet of paper to insert into a magazine to motivate people to reach out to me to come to a class made me very tight. Mm. So I'm able to run things very tight. I, I often play loose, but I can run things really tight. Mm. And, and that made me a much better marketer, made me a better manifester, because I, because I was living in that kind of experience. On the other hand, if I was yeah, act, you know, acting as, as if, living as if, I uh, didn't have that impression like Lisa brought up. It'd be like, yeah, well, like someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which obviously brings us back to DreamDrivenDay.com. Mm. Meanwhile, mm. Tony Doyle, I am absolutely loving you and Donkey putting up uh, lots of uh, hashtags since uh, Banana Man Dr. Brian has t left the building. So <laughs> Banana, Man. <laughs> Banana Man. Somebody do a hashtag Banana, Brian, <laughs> Banana Man Dr. Brian. <laughs> Poor Victoria, she doesn't put hashtags in anymore. Right. No. Well, no, yeah, I did yesterday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was it? Two sh something short or something. It was yeah. your hashtag. I can't so, remember so what it she's was. She's going to put a hashtag in this one saying, 20 no, doesn't not. look at the show. <laughs> right. Hashtag 20 doesn't look at the show. So that was for um, Dream Driven Day, Lisa. Thank you very much for your question, Lisa. All right. And what we want to know is tell us what was your hashtag strawberry bit. What was yours, and Victoria? I just I said to you as you were answering that, I said all of that was my your answer to Lisa and how you pulled in those things and how I also um, mentioned about the difference between, you know, the feeling it real and the living as if, like in the scenario of that example of that guy that wanted to come to Australia. And, yeah, it's just ace. So Beauty. that's all my hashtag stroppy bit. Wow. 
What was yours? I love the way that you and I dance together with you bringing stuff up and me elucidating it uh, or enunciating it. Yeah, or making it, yeah, saying it in understandable a different way. <laughs> to the listening audience. You. No, <laughs> Victoria. Yeah. No, um, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah so it's like, good. I really, I love the way the whole show dances together, the comments that we are able to catch, which are not all of them. Not all of what's going many on. at all, actually. And uh, just how, yeah, the dance that shows up. That to me is the big thing. So mm. cool. Excellent. Tell them about lunch, Victoria. This well, is one of those rare Fridays where we're having banana leaf meals. It is because normally we only buy that on a Sunday and have yes. Sundays and Mondays. Today we're having one because I had it in the freezer. That's right. And, and we're going to add because it's a vegetarian one. Yeah, we don't do now. vegetarian. I do vegetarian so, with flesh. <laughs> we've got 20 prawns. Each. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ten prawns each. All right. Bored out. So mm, you guys wait till you see that lunch. Mm. So that'll be in a couple hours because it's already With 11 mango chutney here. and yogurt. Wow. Yes. You'd call it Australian dipping sauce. Australian or dipping <laughs> sauce. That's okay. Right. Thank you very much. Oh, so Mallory, sorry. Go to easymanifestingmethods.com. Go there. Sign up for those. Make sure you click the link, the confirmation email, all that bullshit. Otherwise, you'll never hear from me. Join mm -hmm. your 90 day adventure at manifestingmasterycourse.com. That is the rightness. <laughs> cool. Dreamdrivenday.com. The doors are open. We start Monday. Right? 8 billion people. Most of them will not sign up. Mm. Uh, and most of them will just be watching the news. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Prepare in the table. Yes, I will, will be enjoy we'll that enjoy is the preparing rightness. the table. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> on, it's Dennis. it's it's so real world, isn't it, Dennis? Like, yeah. I, yeah, the, the analogy, the metaphor, whatever you want to call Being it. Well fed. Because if like mm -hmm. if we weren't eating, right? If she really didn't believe like dinner was gonna come out of the oven, I mean she puts it in. <laughs> if she didn't believe it was coming <laughs> out. If. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna put silverware out. <laughs> we don't yeah. know what happens when you put it in that box. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Anyway. And for refunds, visit our YouTube channel, fillitrealfun.com. That's right. All right. Thank you, you guys. Have a lovely day, everyone. Sweetie Sue, we agree, never the news. That's right. <laughs> so, Victoria? Yes. I'm going to go to the pool. Yeah. That is the rightness everyone said. <laughs>